so much for coming. Can you all hear me? Yeah. All right, great. It really doesn't work well if you can't hear me. First, I really appreciate all of you being here today, each and every one of you. I know you are taking time out of your Saturdays, and I so much appreciate it. Before I do anything else, I want to acknowledge my wife, Lisa, right there. Lisa has been a true and fully committed partner with me in this, in this effort. She has been with me every step of the way, and this campaign would not be nearly as successful without her efforts. So I can't thank you enough. They, they also suggested I blow you a kiss or make like a little heart shape. But yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, so she gets it. I also want to thank our children, Rebecca, who's hiding, Jessica, and Andrew, who couldn't be here today. Their enthusiasm and engagement through this process has been really wonderful for me to see. Uh, and to see them interested in the political life of this city is something I hope they carry with them for the rest of their lives. I would like to also thank everybody with the campaign. This room is full of volunteers and staff members, and I truly believe that I have the very best campaign team in the entire city of Atlanta, if not the world. Please give this up. And, and no, raises do not come along with that. <laughs> Before I share my remarks for today, I ask that you join me in a moment of silence. In honor of a good friend of mine, the former interim president of Morehouse College, Bill Taggart, as well as a resident of the old Fourth Ward, former Fulton County Commissioner Joan Garner. Both of these individuals were quiet, yet incredibly impactful. All of us, all of Atlanta, owes them a great debt of gratitude. And if you would just join me for a moment in recognizing them with silence. Thank you. I am excited to welcome you here today to the Odd Fellows Building. Built more than a century ago and dedicated by Booker T. Washington in 1912, this was where African Americans in Atlanta came to watch the movies and they could sit anywhere they wanted to. This was a special and unique place. Through the 20s and 30s, this is where Black Atlanta came to network and socialize. African-American-owned businesses thrived here, and everyone came here to shop. This at a time when white-owned and operated businesses refused black patrons the dignity that they deserved. This building is a living reminder of why we need historic preservation. Imagine if these walls could talk. Not about the movies, but about the movement. The victories the movement achieved and the sacrifices made by far too many along the way. Indeed, this whole Sweet Auburn district served as an incubator for some of our nation's boldest and most courageous leaders. Places of worship along this street and in this area, and civic organizations like the SCLC and SNCC and others along Auburn Avenue, fanned local flames that reached out across the nation to advance the rights of millions. Many of the names from that era have become household names, connected not just with the civil rights movement, but a movement for justice and freedom from oppression everywhere. 
Names like King, Young, Lewis, Abernathy. They are recognized all over the world, but they started here on Auburn Avenue as a whisper. Why am I dwelling on history? Because before we can consider where we are today, we need to understand where we've been. Both the horrific legacy of slavery and Jim Crow laws and the laws by other names that came after that, as well as the amazing will and ability of Atlanta's African-American community to move forward and create such a special city and such a special district as the Sweet Auburn District. I honor and pay homage to the legacy of this will and success from before the creation of this building through the election of Mayor Maynard Jackson and the changes he wrought on through to today. So speaking of today, where are we today? They say Atlanta is the city too busy to hate. For some, though, that slogan is divorced from reality. Race has been and remains at the heart of Atlanta's story. We must acknowledge this. For the greatness of our city will only be fully realized if we have more ongoing, honest conversations about race and its impact on the city. We must have these conversations with ourselves and with others, and we must take action to fix our problems. While there are some who would like to believe that race is not a factor in the election, there are others who know better but would have us avoid the issue, just as if it were some taboo topic never to be discussed. I refuse to ignore the fact that race still plays a leading role in how this election is being framed, as it has in other cities and other states throughout this country. I refuse to ignore the fact that far too many Atlantans have already segregated the candidates based on race and not record. You all know what I'm talking about. I call it racial calculus. If the leading white candidate gets X votes and the African American candidates split the other votes, then XYZ will happen. Race frames this election. Race is part of the story of Atlanta. And I will not shrink from discussing it and talking about it during such an important activity such as this, where we're choosing the elected leaders for the next four years. In fact, rather than run from race, I say to all of you here and all of Atlanta everywhere, it is long past time for us to even more fully confront this issue so Peachtree can truly meet Sweet Auburn. So we can work together, arm in arm, to advance Atlanta for all of our residents. There are those, to be quite blunt, who wonder if Atlanta will change if I, a white man, am elected as your next mayor. Well, of course I believe Atlanta can do more for its citizens, and of course I believe Atlanta can improve. So yes, it will change, but I do not believe it will change in the way people fear. I am not running because I believe I would make the best white man. I'm running because, because I believe I would make the best mayor, regardless of race. If the policies I enact don't improve the city, if they don't help people, if they don't change the city for the better, then I would have failed as your mayor, no matter what my race. So we can't ignore this issue in this election. It's not necessarily an easy issue to talk about, but we have to talk about it. 
So how will I confront the issue of race? And how will I help keep Atlanta special in the ways that it's special? I start by fully acknowledging the inequities and problems around us. I recognize that a child born into poverty in Atlanta has only a 4% chance of escaping. I see the construction crane, the official bird of Atlanta, <laughs> right? The official bird of Atlanta, the construction crane, it's, it makes me sad and it makes me angry that it rarely flies south of I-20, right? It doesn't. I understand, at least to the degree I can without having lived there, the impact of broken promises in the past by City Hall. Like the promise that was made to connect Perry Homes, once one of the city's lowest income communities with mass transit. Perry Homes was promised a connection to MARTA that was built into the selling of MARTA. MARTA passed, the referendum passed, and the promise, the covenant was broken. The pain and suffering that caused is still here and with us. I remember what I saw as Chief Operating Officer when I was in the homes of those families in Atlanta who were excluded for any number of reasons from what much of Atlanta has to offer. And like many, my family has experienced crime. Whether nonviolent crime, such as when cars on our street are broken into, or more serious crime, such as when one of my daughter's friends was held up at gunpoint. These inequities particularly as they present in the lives of people of color in Atlanta, stand out for me because I have also seen the other side of the coin. I know, for example, that Atlanta is still considered the mecca for those who are holding aspirations to move into the black middle or upper class. I have seen the tremendous advancements of Asian Americans in our city and the Hispanic and Latino community, it's one of the fastest growing in our city. So I can see for myself that communities of color are able to achieve the American dream right here, right in Atlanta. But far too few are able to break through. It's too hard to break through. They remain behind, trapped in cycles of poverty, and systems of injustice and inequity. That's wrong. It is also critical for somebody running for mayor to acknowledge their limits. I admit that I don't know what it's like to suffer just because of the color of my skin. I can't fully understand that. I must accept that limit and because of that, I have to take special care to listen to people. Beyond these recognitions, I have and will continue to do everything I can to listen and overcome these obstacles. Whether it's explicit, ugly racism, or the implicit bias and systemic discrimination, which hides just beneath the surface but harms us all so deeply. So I pledge to you that the day after my election and every day of my tenure, Atlanta will still be Atlanta because I respect, appreciate, and wish to celebrate what makes Atlanta the special and diverse community it is today. But not only that, I will continue to have an inclusive cabinet and workforce at the City of Atlanta. I will keep and enhance the equal business opportunity programs and, the, and the, the minority business opportunity programs at the city and at the airport. I will open the lines of communication even more within the city so that we can continue building a path toward becoming a better, more inclusive version of ourselves. Beyond my pledge, though, it is also important to note that what makes Atlanta special is not just one person. 
I mean, it's not just the mayor, it's not just the city council. What makes Atlanta special is all of us, and it's baked into our DNA. So how do we do it? How do we advance Atlanta together? We must start with the resolve and vision to begin to tear these inequities out by their very roots and improve the lives of all Atlantans. I have this resolve and I have this vision. We cannot let one more child enter pre-K unprepared. We cannot allow one more person to feel unsafe in their neighborhoods. We cannot continue to rank among the worst cities for traffic. We cannot, we cannot allow our homeless population to grow. We cannot allow the very people that built Atlanta and made it special be forced out by rising costs. We simply cannot lose that battle. It's time to advance Atlanta together. I have some very specific ideas on how we can do this, on how we can advance Atlanta. I'm, I'm going to cover just a few of them because the key parts of the message I want you to take away are some of the ones that I've just talked about. But I do believe it's important to know what I am going to do as your mayor that will work specifically towards these ends. While crime rates have improved in this city, we must do even more to keep people safe. We have to continue the current efforts and get back to more than 2,000 police officers in the city of Atlanta, and we have to stay there. We need that many officers so they can quickly respond to your calls for help. But make no mistake, I do not want simply more officers. I want the right police officers. I want officers who, who practice compassionate community policing, officers that truly care about the people they're serving, even when they do something wrong. I want a police force that is part of the community, that always acts constitutionally, fairly, and humanely. That's why when I was chief operating officer, I shut down a unit of the Atlanta Police Department called the Red Dog Unit. I shut it down because I didn't believe, I didn't have confidence that they would always behave in the way I just described. That's the kind of mayor I will be. No citizen, no citizen should be afraid of their own police force. There's something else we need to get right. A once in a generation opportunity to improve mobility for all of Atlantans. The next mayor, in partnership with MARTA, will direct up to $14 billion in infrastructure investments to help us get around this city. We must get it right. We must spend that money efficiently and fairly and effectively. Jobs follow transit. Transit allows people in all neighborhoods to access jobs and access better jobs. This is about the Beltline, but it's about more than just the Beltline. This is about transportation equity, connectivity, and yes, having a more livable and convenient city. Southwest to northeast, east to west, should all be connected in multiple ways for everybody. So that's light rail, that's heavy rail, that's buses, that's bicycles, that's safe sidewalks, and yes, that's more efficient roads. But it has to be done with equity and fairness in mind. Mobility is something we have to work on for many reasons in Atlanta. But safety and mobility are not enough to me. I will say here what I say on the campaign trail all the time. I am willing to bet whether I have a second term or not based upon whether 
I can help Atlanta Public Schools and the city of Atlanta get on a strong pathway to do even more for our children. If we haven't done that after the end of my first term, if I haven't been able to work with Atlantans to get us on that strong pathway, then I don't deserve a second term. Specifically, I want to help at the beginning of our children's lives by making sure that all our children have access to birth, to age three, early childhood enrichment and development and education programs. They need greater access in our city, throughout the city. I will help them during their journey at APS by providing more wraparound services, services in the neighborhood, services to help them outside of the school. And I'll help them with their journey at APS by being the very best mayor the city of Atlanta has ever seen in partnering with the Atlanta Public School Board. And not just the school board, but the superintendent, and the teachers, and the principals, and the students. I want to be there and be their partner. I will help them thrive as they leave the school system, wherever they go, by supporting the programs that help kids get into college and stay into college and graduate. And also, I will help those that need job placement, job training that need services from Atlanta beyond what Atlanta Public Schools can offer. And finally, I will help create affordable and stable and safe communities because those safe communities that are stable are in fact vital for schools to be good. It all works together and a mayor has to work on it all. You can't live in silos. Education is the key to stronger communities. It is the key to stronger communities, and it's the key to lower crime, and it's the key to long-term job creation, and it's an investment that we have to make. There is no better investment that we can make than in that of our children. Underlying all of these points, you should be able to believe in your government. That is why ethical leadership is the bedrock on which my platform and my efforts is built. All of these reasons and more are why I am standing right here in the Odd Fellows building. All of these reasons and more are why I am standing right here asking to serve as your next mayor. My name is Peter Amon. I stand before you offering my heart and my passion and my ideas in service to this great city. I ask for you to join me on this journey so that every person, regardless of race, gender, identity, age, or orientation, will come together to advance Atlanta together. Thank you.